And you'll see that Diaz is 12 years younger than his veteran Mongolian opponent. Diaz giving up one inch in height, one inch in arm length, measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. And tonight, they weigh 150 for Lak Kasim and 142 for Diaz after yesterday having weighed in at or just below the lightweight limit. Should be a tremendously exciting fight. Both guys are hard, straight-ahead chargers who will try to land as many punches as possible. Harold Letterman, the rules of the bout. Okay, Jim. The Lafkissim Juan Diaz fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. The case of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the battle in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. And here comes Diaz. For much of his career, he has been the lesser known of the Houston products. Rocky Juarez, of course, had by far the more spectacular amateur career. Diaz, at age 16, had a chance to be included on the Mexican Olympic team that went to Sydney, but ultimately it was ruled that he was too young. But as an example, Jim, of uh, this young man's ambition, he started as a pro at 16 years old as a welterweight and fought a number of fights as a welterweight but he saw that his future would be at a lower weight division he disciplined himself and here he is with a chance to move in to the big money and the high rankings the top two lightweights in the world in the eyes of ring magazine are the mexican star jose luis castillo and brazil's Asselino freitas but Sim, as we told you, holds a title belt, and Ring Magazine ranks young Juan Diaz just behind Sim. So here's a closer look at Juan Diaz. Juan Diaz did not go to his senior prom because he had a prize fight on that night. He entered law school, the University of, sorry, the University of Houston, where he is in pre-law. He had a 3.8 average as a high school student now just to fill in the time between law school and boxing he is going to a carpenter school because he feels that uh, maybe someday he'll build his own home i just don't think he has enough to do <laughs> he hasn't got the hang yet of putting together an entourage hanging out in pubs beating people up all he does is go to school what kind of now, fighter can he be here larry comes arguably the famous Mongolian since Genghis Khan. Well, he's the only professional fighter in Mongolia. They have had a number of fighters in the Olympics. He's the only one who ever turned pro. Most of his fights have been fought elsewhere in Asia. And uh, if you want to know about his style, if you've seen some of those all-out Korean fighters, that's what he does. He comes forward and then comes forward again. He says he's almost never fought before a crowd or even a fan who rooted for him. Three losses on his record, all of them decisions, two in Korea against Korean fighters, one in Thailand against a Thai fighter, and as you might suspect, he says to us, I've never lost a fight. All split decisions, by the way. Closer look now at Lak Kasim with Larry Merchant. Lak Kasim married a literature professor they have three children. He says that in his blood is the bravery and the strength and the tradition of Genghis Khan, the notorious world dominator of the 13th century. He himself, the way he fights, is a one-man Mongolian horde. All right, so let's see if he can plow under Juan Diaz and his entire city of Houston as we go up to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Main Events presents 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Lightweight Championship of the World. Brought to you in association with Goose and Tudor Promotions. Sponsored by Miller Lite and sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. Chairman Leo Vasquez, Executive Director William Kunz. The three judges at ringside scoring this bout on the 10-point system will be Dwayne Ford, Ray Hawkins, 
and Marcos Torres. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Lawrence Cole. And now, for the thousands in attendance here in Houston, Texas, and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, Thomas y Caballeros, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing light blue trimmed with dark blue and officially weighing in at 134 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, a perfect one, consisting of 24 bouts, 24 victories, including 12 knockouts. Here is the challenger from Houston, Texas, the undefeated Juan, the baby boy. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue. His official weight, 135 pounds. His professional record stands at 19 victories, including 16 knockouts, with only three defeats and one bout even. From Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, presenting the reigning, defending, WBA lightweight champion of the world, Lakvasi. Just touch him up. Come on, Latka. Just touch him up. Good luck, Ajin. <coughs> this is a man, Sim, with man strength fighting a boy who is not a big knockout puncher stopped just half of his 24 victims can he make up with energy and volume and courage what he lacks in power against a very tough opponent Lakva Sim sparred in Los Angeles in preparation for this fight with Australian veteran Robbie Peden and with Diego Corrales that means he sparred in a different league than anywhere Juan Diaz has ever been Diaz is fighting in his hometown. That neutralizes a lot of those other yeah. handicaps. And, and Sim almost came in for the yeah. first round yeah. without his mouth guard. Right. And also Diaz, as I said, with the past previous fights, he's been a, he's been a busy kid. Now, I usually go along with the fighters who've been the most active. Despite a hit and be hit style, though, Emmanuel, uh, Juan Diaz has only scored knockouts in half his fights. Does that mean he's underpowered? Well, I think he's on the power, and, and I was talking to Ronnie Shields, his trainer, and they expected to uh, win the fight by just doing a lot of punches for the most part. And that can be very difficult when you got a guy like this, Black Sims, who's a physical guy who covers up, walks you down, has a good chin. It means the young guys would have to work awful hard overtime all night long. For well, the most part early, Sim is content to let Diaz do the punching while he does the blocking and looking. Yeah, and he's walking that little. Diaz wants to throw 80 to 100 punches per round, firing to the body and the head. He's particularly proud of his body attack, which he thinks breaks down opponents. Well, I don't think his body attack may be that effective. Now, I think what he's doing right now is what he should do. Working his jab, which seems to work very good, effectively between Sims' gloves. And hopefully try to bust up his face some. If he can take a good punch, at least try to bust the skin up more. And that's what he's got to watch, that short right hand that Sim shoots when he gets close to him. They trade body shots. Diaz is able to throw more punches. He lands two big ones upstairs. Diaz doing a good job keeping his guard up early. Sim looks at that and says, I'll go to your body. Good counter left hook by Diaz. One to the body and now one upstairs. And he lands his jab. He should stick to that jab. Good footwork by Diaz. Lands punches and moves to the side. And this is the way he should continue to fight. Combinations in and out, moving around, working a lot of jabs, changing directions up and not trying to be physical and get a knockout right away. The 
and always watching out for Sims' short right hand. He's continually beating Sim to the... <laughs> well, I think Sims is a quick upstairs by Diaz. Love the way he throws the left hook off the jab. Sim landed a little uppercut inside. Diaz punished him to the body with the left hook and gets him twice more before the round closes. Good round. Short act of punching, not one clinch in the entire round. In Lakpa lock, lock Sims' corner, our interpreter is Basan Ratcha. So you don't have, you don't have to worry. Just you have to be relaxed and everything is going fine. So just be relaxed. Don't be in a hurry. Nothing is wrong. So try to punch your from the downside. Just always look at him. Just be patient. Don't be in a hurry. So that is the most important thing for you now. Give me the combination, but just stop him out. Okay? All right? Uh -huh. Everything is good now, baby, okay? Get left hand up. Uh, look, don't let this guy push you fast. Take your time. Ronnie Shields giving the combinations, but step around. In other words, when you land, don't be there for the return. I think it was great instructions from Ronnie. You see how Diaz pops the jab and immediately moves to his left. When he stands long enough to fire a two or three punch combination, he's got to make them count. Sim trying to counter with the right hand every time Diaz stands still. Sim saw what Diaz was bringing in the first round, and he's stepped it up a little bit right here. Yes, he has. Punching very hard and very active. Obviously deciding he's going to fight at a faster pace to match what Diaz showed in round one. If Diaz keeps boxing, jabbing, and changing directions, he's got a good chance. Otherwise, it's going to be a nightmare night for him going down the stretch. Two solid left hooks by Diaz. Lab Kasim finally lands a left hook in return. Body shot by Diaz. Straight right hand. Lands for Juan Diaz. Sim blocked the left hook this time, becoming more and more conscious of Diaz's left hand. So Diaz goes down to the body and comes back upstairs. Now Sim landing his own left hook and step inside, but Diaz fires back three times. The body shots are tremendously effective. Uppercut stunned Lock the Sim, and Diaz was able to land a straight right hand across the top. Crowd which chanted Rocky, Rocky, Rocky in the preceding fight for Juarez. Chanting Diaz, Diaz, Diaz for the baby bull. I've been very impressed with Diaz. He looks very good. Sharp, accurate punches. Fights like a veteran fighter. And takes a pretty good punch, too. Right hand inside by Sim. That was not Sim's fastball. That was. And Diaz comes back with a three punch combination. Again, the left hook to the body and a perfect straight right hand upstairs. Good clean shots by Juan Diaz, blocking Sims' right or Sims right with his left hand. Luck for Sim is a hard man from a hard country. He has taken some fierce, fierce punishment in this fight. Yes, he has. In the last 20 seconds of the round, Sim seemed to say, all right, you're fighting at that pace, I'll step up and fight you toe to toe. I can stay back around you, okay? Now listen. Hey, very good round, okay? Hold up. Tonight is your night, baby, to keep boxing like that, okay? This is your, this is your fight, baby. Look, the guy too slow for you. Keep using the hand speed on it, but no, just keep walking around and do not back away from this man, okay? You gotta keep turning. Don't stay there too long, okay? okay. I understand. Don't let him put that pressure on you like that, okay? Mm -hmm. Just relax. He's trying to lure you to a fight early, okay? All right. Now listen. 
Let score points with the jab. Bring the jab down a little bit. Sometimes you jab a little bit too high. These kinds of combinations and flurries with Diaz ending with big clean punches like this. Go, coaches. So far, for two rounds, he's stealing the show. He looks but there could be to 10 hard oh. rounds ahead of him. It's yes, a tremendously possibly. energetic style. It will take enormous stamina for Diaz to keep that up and fight at that pace for 12 rounds. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's still a young man. He's an, uh, he's a young, strong, mature man. Sim countered the left hook with the right uppercut. Diaz continues to focus on the body. More and more, though, Juan is beginning to stand still, and that may give Sim some chance to land counter shots. As hard as Diaz can land a punch, Lachvisim just keeps walking. It's like pouring water on a stone. People expected this to be an all-out brawl. Ronnie Shields and Juan Diaz said, no, no, we're going to box. So far, they've been able to do it. Double jab from Diaz. Continuing to use his feet. You heard Ronnie Shields say, don't be in front of this man. Keep walking around him. And Diaz with tremendous work to the body there. Both hands. And that left hook to the body is being thrown with tremendous conviction. Straight, short right hands from Sim in return. Diaz knocking Sim off balance with the jab there. Ooh. Difference in hand speed works in Diaz's yeah, he's favor. Working very good. I mean, he, one thing I like, he's keeping that left hand up high because as Sim gets close, he has that short, chopping right hand that is extremely dangerous. But Diaz seems to keep his hand up and looking for that punch to come. And he's not boxing. He's splitting the stand toe to toe. Sims. Evidently, he thinks that he can punch a little bit harder than we think he can. Well, I wonder if Sim has ever gone up against such a strong body attack as he's receiving now. No, I don't think he's been with this type of a spirited young fighter, neither himself. So this is something new for him. You know, it's interesting. Sim fought a 12-round fight in his third professional fight. They don't baby you in, uh, in Asia. <laughs> he fought a four-rounder, and he skipped virtually from a four-rounder to a 12-rounder, almost. With one fight in between. Different education system. These two guys are trading blistering body shots in this round. He's a dangerous puncher. And you notice the referee... Cole has not had to do anything at all in terms of breaking up these fighters. Well, and what a relief that is. That's so yeah. <laughs> between Rocky Juarez and Zaire Rahim. Yeah, you forget that Lawrence Cole is even working the fight. Good, good. There's the familiar face of Joe Goosen. Yeah, it's an interesting corner with Sam. You got Joe Goosen, who we know also. Over there is John Arthur, who's quietly been the assistant of the top fighters from Goose and Jim. He's been with uh, Michael Nunn, uh, Carlos Palomino, uh, and, and with James Tony. And that's the job itself. Not so much working the corner, but being with him every day, which is what James Arthur does. John Arthur. Three. Three. He's getting paid. Yeah. Joe Goosen uh, is the brother of Dan Goosen, the promoter who promotes Latkesem, and that's why you saw him in that position suddenly move in. So obviously, the Goosens are very concerned. Well, and, and the Goosens picked up the promotional rights to Latkesem after Joe Goosen told Dan Goosen, his brother, the promoter, that he would not put his 130-pound star, Joel Casamayor, in against this particular Mongolian fighter. Harold, how do you have it scored through three? Okay, Jim. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Juan Diaz. Jim, you just can't beat that hand speed. I mean, this kid's got incredible poise, tremendous hand speed. He doubles and triples everything. I mean, he's just winning the fight on hand speed and great combinations. 
And he does not seem to be getting tired, neither, which is interesting. Well, when you're 20 years old, maybe you don't get that tired. No, and he's been fighting regularly. That's the one thing. I like the activity level. But it's still early in the fight. He's starting to feel combinations from Sim. He was largely one punch at a time in the earlier going. Seems to be getting his game together. Yeah, Sims but still taking a lot of leather from Diaz. Yeah, but Sims is landing some good punches this, this round. Here. Particularly with a short right hand. Right hand uppercut for Diaz. Now he throws the uppercut with the left hand. Blocks the left hook from Sim and lands his own left hook cleanly. Another great combination. Diaz left hook to the body, right cross upstairs. Now Sim lands his right cross. Diaz comes right back to the rib cage. Uppercut from Diaz and another left hook. Sim lands his own uppercut. And the left hook inside. This is great stuff. This is power. Every one of these punches are power punches. And at this stage here, the referee has not, to my memory, has had to step in one time to separate them from a clinch. You don't see better rounds than this. These are power punches. They're accurate punches, not slaps. Well, I thought we might have 12 candidates for round of the year. We have at least one right now. This is remarkable. <laughs> If this doesn't tire Juan Diaz out, nothing will. No. Stop! 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 Move it up. It's a little low. Alright? Lachman Sim steps in as if to Lack say, you're going to hit me to the body, I'll show you what a body shot is. Lachman must feel a little bit of a weakness for, for a split second there. In fact, I think that pitch was precipitated primarily by Diaz. Sim has made a mark on Diaz's body with that right hand. And now Diaz, for the first time in the fight, is standing toe-to-toe -to -toe without ever moving away after punching. And Ronnie Shields, I have a punch, is going to mention it to him between rounds. Yeah, and he better watch that short right hand, too. Diaz went a little uppercut crazy there for a minute. That's the right hand that he better watch for. Sim has started landing his own uppercut. This round has gone three minutes and 20 seconds, incidentally. So one of the reasons that so much punishment is being meted out is that it appears the clock is taking an, a strange turn. According to our timing, they fought for three minutes and 40 seconds in that round. Perhaps we're at, at, at a yes, difference sir. with the official timer. Here's what I need from you now. I need you to go to the jail for me, okay? okay. Give me a deep breath, baby. Give me a deep breath. Look, listen to me. You got to keep doing what you're doing at first when you're on the inside. But look, I want you to take a round off with the jab, okay? okay. okay. I need you to do that for me this round, okay? Right. Look, faint him, walk around. Use the jab, use the jab. Faint. Walk around every night and you shoot that Okay, you have to just watch your hands. Left, right, left, right. That continue. You have to watch the hand uh, uh, rotation and also just and her body punching has to be very more active. You can win especially. This fight. You can knock him out. Okay. Hey, use that. Here is that vicious exchange early in the round. Leaves the qu always leaves the question of if one guy's punching hard but the other guy has a great chin, how do you know who's if, who's who's the hardest? Well, I think mm. Sim seems to be about a bigger puncher, and the difference between Sim and Teddy Reed is that Reed was shooting wide lunging punches, very little defense. This guy, like with Sim, keeps his hands tight, pretty good defense, and his punches are very short and accurate. And you heard Ronnie Shields asking Juan Diaz to take around to use the jab and move around and box a little bit more. I don't think Shields liked seeing Diaz getting painted with 32 power punches in that last round. If Emmanuel. I, if I was in the corner with Diaz, even though he's winning, I would be a nervous wreck. Because 
It doesn't look that great for him going down the stretch. It looks like it's going to be a nightmare, providing he doesn't get a knockout. Well, as Larry Merchant pointed out at the beginning of the fight, he is a 20-year-old going against a 32-year-old going against a man with a man's strength. And Lakbasim is all of that. Emmanuel, a viewer asks, looking at Diaz landing all these punches without really hurting Sim, is there something he, do, he could do to improve his punching power? Well, I'd have to train him. Because things like you have to have your hands tight at the end of the punches. That's one of the key things. Here. But in this case here, I would say we'll work on that later. I would do just what Ronnie said and tell him to get out and try to box this round. Because I can see that even though he's winning, this guy's getting closer and closer and closer with those short power punches. Yeah, but you know, I counted in the first minute of the fight about 15 punches to one for Diaz. All clean punches. So... I think uh, Latka Sim is too uh, comfortable in there either. No, no, I don't think he's ever been in this type of a situation either. Because he's got a real young fire plug that's throwing a lot of punches, and he's punching pretty accurate and powerful himself. And of course, Sim is so strong that he's not, a, it's not an accurate reflection of how hard Diaz might punch someday to measure it against this fellow. This is one of the toughest guys, probably physically, that Diaz may fight in his entire career. Diaz shows some real skill in the infighting there, Emmanuel, in the yes. way he found, bought some time for about 10 or 12 seconds without tying Lakva up. Well, it was very smart fighting, you know, and don't forget he had a brilliant amateur career, you know, just barely missed making the Olympic team because of it being underage. So his foundation is very solid. Diaz having a little energy spurt down the stretch here. Seems to regain some of the initiative as he outlands Sim down the stretch of that round. That was a very big round for Diaz. That's what I need, baby. That's exactly what I need, okay? That's exactly what I need. Okay? Give me some water. September Give me some more 18, water. Some HBO pay-per-view brings okay, you one water. of the biggest fights in recent up. memory. When undisputed smart, middleweight okay. champion Bernard Hopkins up. puts his title belts on the line okay. against the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. It's the biggest challenge of De La Hoya's career. With the undisputed middleweight championship at stake, a championship which has held for a decade. Okay. Start your uppercuts now, okay? Okay? Start your uppercuts for me, okay? I need you to get your uppercuts. What? To, you have to you have to watch him he's getting tired now you have to you have to catch that moment don't lose the moment you know no matter what language they use trainers always lie to their fighters about how <laughs> how the other fighter looks <laughs> a good trainer can lie in several languages right <laughs> In that last round, Diaz landed 13 jabs by CompuBox count, the most of any round. The first time in the fight that he's landed in double figures with the jab. And he fires another perfectly thrown jab there, right onto the face of Lak Basim. You know, it's one thing for Sims who have fought a boxer somewhere along the way, but when do you fight a boxer who's going to do that? It's unbelievable the combinations that he's doing. He's punching straight punches, combinations to the body, to the head. Diaz is doing everything tonight. Well, in the last round, I thought he regained the initiative by using his feet. Yeah, once he did, that seemed like Sim Cena lost his momentum for a while. His, yeah. and his, his rhythm, and then, and then at the end, he, it got a little close. But movement kind of throws him off track a little bit. I think the lesson of the fight so far is if Diaz moves, he has the advantage. If he stands still, he could get in trouble. Right. And the reason he has the advantage when he moves is that when, that Sim has to be a little bit careful about coming in because he's walking into some vicious combination. That he's not used to walking into. Right. And, and also, Diaz seems to consist what punch to throw at certain times. Even though Sim has his hands up tight, you know, Diaz seems to feel I can get away with uppercut, I can shoot the left hook, and he does it automatically. How well Diaz follows instruction. Ronnie Shields asked him to faint 
moves and jab. He's doing it with textbook skill in this round. Yes, and he's been able to land punches between the tight defense of Lackey, which is very interesting, especially for a young fighter. And the fates are freezing Sim and setting up combination opportunities for Diaz. Most of Sims' punches in this round blocked by Diaz with his gloves. But Diaz has been hit with enough shots in this fight that I would actually label him as being able to take a good punch. Oh, he's been rocked. Good uppercut by Diaz. The stoic face of Alert Gassin is beginning to show welts. Bruises. He is human. Indeed. Diaz is making that face lumpy, trying to paint a picture which will influence the judges in his favor. I know when he's definitely influenced me tonight. Tremendous round for Juan Diaz, who blunted Sim's offense with his movement. And Yet Sim, again. And Sim tapped him on the shoulder at the end of the round as if to say, You're pretty good. Yeah, you know, and Diaz has <laughs> kept his composure all the time, too. You can do anything you want to do with this guy now. You yeah. understand? Mm -hmm. Look, when you in close, just make sure your hands high. Give me some head movement in there. Come up with your uppercut, and then, look, you got to step around, okay? okay? Now, look, he don't like it when you're going to the right. Every time you go, keep shooting the uppercut. Keep but start coming back with the hook in the right keep hand now. Okay. okay, now listen. But I want you to keep... Sim finally gets Diaz cornered. And look what he has to pay to get him when he gets there. What's the point of going into your opponent, chasing him down, but then you walk into this kind of stuff? It's like a lion chases the rhinoceros, and the rhinoceros turns around and whacks him. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim. Five rounds to one, 59-55, Juan Diaz. Jim, can I tell you, we always talk about uh, ring generalship as part of scoring. This is beautiful ring generalship by Juan Diaz. I mean, he's moving around, setting up Lafkus, Lafkus, Lafkus in for those shots, and led to tremendous combinations, great hand speed. I got to tell you something, Jim, you talked about Joe Goosen. Juan Diaz is a product of one of the great trainers of the game, Willie Savannah. And also, and Shields, and Ronnie Shields also, who, who also was trained by uh, Willie himself. Ronnie Shields was a fantastic amateur fighter, though. Probably one of the most beautiful amateur fighters I've ever seen in my entire life. Twice fought for championships as a pro, wasn't quite able to get them. Has been a terrific trainer, often in difficult circumstances. If Juan Diaz wins tonight, it'll be the 13th to 14th champion with whom Ronnie Shields has been involved as a trainer. Another combination to the body by Juan Diaz. Another three-punch combination ending up upstairs. You know, Diaz has had some problems with his hands in the past. You can see why if he lands in so many punches on this hard man, whether he might have some problems. And that's what he's in, I guess, a man too. In rounds three and four, Lock the Sim successfully got Juan Diaz to stand still several times and landed shots which placed Diaz's future in the fight momentarily in doubt. But in the fifth round, Diaz began to move his feet again and since that time has been thoroughly in command of Lock the Sim. Well, it shows you that Diaz uh, has the intelligence to go along with his... Uh, Fiery style. It's a rare combination. And the speed and the energy and the desire and the commitment to work hard. He's got a lot. Two good left hands to the body inside by Diaz. And Sim is slowing down just a little bit. His shots 
don't have nearly as much vinegar as they did in the third no, and fourth no, round. I don't think he's ready for this pacing. He uses the guy who applies the pressure, and other guys just based from him, and he gradually wears them down. He's not used to anyone challenging him with the intensity the way Diaz is challenging him. Sim tries to faint Diaz, and Diaz just busts him in the head with the left hook. And they nod at each other again in competitive appreciation at the end of seven. But he's getting tired, so you, you know, you have to, don't make any pause, just punch and punch, and don't give any time to rest, just look and uh, look at the point and punch, that will give him something, you know, you have more experience. So you don't have to be in a hurry. Just wait. Let him punch. That's not the, the punch. important thing. Keep punching. Keep punching. Keep pressure. Keep punching. Here is an abbreviated version of this fight. This has been going on for seven rounds. Okay. Round of a schedule 12. Juan Diaz in the light blue trunks. Lock the stem of Mongolia in the white with blue trim. Sim, as rugged as his Mongolian origins would suggest to you, Diaz has been spectacular. With his speed, energy, will, hard punching. Diaz seemed to be really enjoying himself. You know, as I say, some guys like to bang. He seems to see, enjoy sitting down and just punching down where he could probably box. But I think he feels very comfortable in it with what he's doing. in the right. Uh, we better keep that left hand up close to his face though. Watch for that short sneaky right hand to come. Done very well at that so far. Yeah. He's done a tremendous a job blocking job. and parrying Sims punches oh, inside. Uh, it's an awesome performance tonight. In each passing round Sim looks just a little less dangerous and Diaz looks safer and safer. The safer he looks, the more he looks like a winner because he's still faster, he's more resourceful, he's landing more punches. Just, just a question of whether his stamina holds up through four or five more rounds of this. That's what I was worried about, Larry, but what I can see, I believe he's going to be okay. I, I, he seems to be in great shape, very comfortable with the situation, whereas Citron was a little bit more uncomfortable, a little bit more nervous, even though he's winning. I think that's because of the lack of experience not having many amateur fights. Sintron, I, th I think the uh, the tears have showed you how relieved he was. He yes. seemed nervous all the way through the fight. And Diaz is like, you know, it's like he was born to be a fighter. He's very comfortable with everything Sim he's doing. I think Sim is doing some good work inside here in this round. He may have won this round. These two guys respect each other. Four rounds and you won a champion. Now that's something. The next installment Look, of Real Sports premieres this Tuesday night. Among the stories, Bryant Gumbel goes you to understand? Japan to see how a failed you NFL you lineman named Bob Sapp has become a K-1 fighting okay. sensation Listen. and one Look. of the biggest stars in Japan. This guy, all he's trying to do is just out hustle you now, yeah. okay? All right? Yeah. Now listen to me. I need you to use that jab for me now, okay? 
The jab is going to win the fight for you? No. And I need right hand, straight right hand. So you use the jab, to, use the jab, and straight right hand. Yeah, okay? Then step around. I don't want you inside. You have to be more aggressive. So be close and give it a close jab and uh, more power now. You need nothing else. That so you will win. Keep going forward. Keep going. Lock the Sims punch output had been dropping in that round. However, he threw 71 punches, the most he's thrown since round number four. So Sim seems to be feeling a sense of urgency now as we reach round nine. And Diaz gets back on his movement trip, trying to fulfill Ronnie Shields' demand that he use his feet and move to reestablish his dominance in the fight. When his feet are moving, his hands come free and land in combination. Yeah, he's trying a tremendous fight. And, and, and Sam just is coming to him all the time in this round, particular scene, he came out with a lot of urgency because he realized that he's losing the fight and he's putting a lot of pressure, but Diaz meets him halfway and beats him to the punch. And his punches are graphic. That is to say, you could see him in the last row of the arena. So surely the judges at ringside can see this. Extremely willing fighters. Fourth round of this fight is one of the best rounds we've seen in a long time. Diaz's face relatively unmarked in comparison with that of Sim. That will help with the judges as well. Trying to think of recent fighters who've won world titles as early in age as Juan Diaz. Mike Tyson has won way back in 1988. This is one of the toughest fights that I've saw a young fighter have to especially for winning a title. Fernando Vargas won a world title very early in his career. Now here comes Diaz at 20, trying to take Simca's title belt. But this is one of the roughest championship fights I've ever saw a young kid have. He's winning the fight big, but this guy's challenging him all the way with short, accurate power punches and relentless. Yeah. You want to be world champion, right? Yeah. This is your championship round. Give me the water. This is the championship round right here, son. This is where it counts, right here. You understand me? It's good, baby. This is the 10, 11, and 12. That's it. Okay? Now listen. All this guy doing is just trying to get you to keep throwing fast punches, okay? I don't need that. Listen to me. When you're punching with him now, when you, look, I don't want you punching with him. I want you holding him now. You understand that? But look, don't let him wrestle you, okay? I think now everything is going just perfect. Now only thing is you have to attack and don't give him any distance. The, key, the distance is uh, an advantage for him. So just press him, push him. And try to keep the distance as close as possible. Attempting to crank up the pressure. Lakba Sim threw 82 punches in the last round, the most he's thrown in any round of the fight. Now he continues to try to stalk and come in on Diaz, and Diaz tries to continue using his feet and his combination punching to fend Sim off. Boy, and he's walked into Sim. Sim probably has to score at least a knockdown to get close to the scoring. 
and that might not be enough. No, I don't think. I don't think Diaz is not going to be denied tonight. I don't think it's nothing that's going to, you know, cause him to lose his fight. I, I don't. I hate to say it. Seemed like he had his mind made up, and he takes a good punch, and his stamina, which is really amazed me for a young fighter. Another one of those body-to-head left-hook combinations by Diaz. He's landed a large number of those. He's landed his jab. He's landed a lot of one-twos with the right cross, and he's done extremely well with the uppercut, as he did right there. He's put together a tremendous amount of punches, and especially when you look at the tight defense that Sim has, and he's been able to find ways to penetrate as if Sim had his hands down almost. Yeah. Sometimes youth is better than experience. How long a career can a fighter like Diaz have fighting in a 135 pound weight class with this physically taxing style? These type fight takes a lot out of him. If he keeps fighting like this year, all of his fights, it's very difficult to go over five or six years and do it on top of this pace, you know. But, you know, hopefully you don't have to fight this type of guy. This, this is a very unusual opponent right here with Sims. I, one of the toughest guys I've ever saw and also a dangerous fighter. Yeah, some of Diaz's opponents are going to seem like a vacation after this kind of rough war against Lacta Sim. In fact, he may go on a knockout streak for his next 10 fights, possibly, after fighting Sim. Win a few more fights. Graduate law school. <laughs> he's good. He's an amazing guy, you know. He's going to school, uh, going to school to be a carpenter and training. And it will be probably tonight the lightweight champion of the world. Three point at a eight average in high school. Good grade point average in government at the University of Houston downtown campus. And Hoping to go to law school. Yeah. Hoping to be a world championship boxer too. As crowd pleasing a fighter as you'll find in the sport, with the sole possible exception of the guy you're gonna watch next Saturday night. No disrespect for Gatti, but I don't think Gatti would want to have nothing to do with this guy, even though he's under 35 pounds. Who would? Now listen, I need, I need you to stay close to him now, okay? No more backing out. This is what we've trained for. These last championship rounds, now you got to be the new champion right here. Okay. Look, don't let this man, do not let this man out hustle you now, okay? Look, keep digging the body, keep digging that body, and keep shooting the uppercuts, okay? I want you digging punches. Forget the fast punches. Yeah, I want hard down. shots to the body Take and hard shots to uppercut. Okay? Deep okay? That's what Take I need. Deep okay? I need the hands high. Give me some of the slight head moving inside, but stay close to him. Here's another left hook. Around the glove of like the Sim. Perfectly yeah. placed. Yeah, you know Sim, Sim had his yeah. hands yeah. where you tell him to have his hands. <laughs> That's what is so amazing. He finds a way to get punches too, even with his hands up. You know, Jim, you mentioned about his 3.8 average in uh, high school. He says his brother, who is uh, an undefeated featherweight prospect, had a 4.0, straight A. That's who's has. And uh, Harold, how do you have it through 10? <laughs> okay, Jim, eight runs to two. 98, 92, one Diaz. Jim, I don't know. The only runs that I could see left to some winning were runs four and eight. Other than that, one Diaz is too much ring generalship, too many great punches, great combinations, tremendous hand speed, good defense. You know, real tight, like Emmanuel said. This kid is tremendous for 20 year old. Ducked the right hand, hits him with a huge left hook. You heard Ronnie Shields. Asking Juan Diaz Emmanuel yeah. not to go with the fast punches in the last two rounds, but come out and hit him hard. The, the, the pedigree in him won't let him do it. He, he's going to fight his fight. He enjoys actually the fight. Now, even when he has to stand toe to toe, he seems to enjoy it. You know, instead of saying, well, this guy's strong, I'm going to hit on points, I can box, take it easy, stay out of the way. That's just not him. Yeah, but look how well he, he takes care of himself inside. Yes, he angles himself very good so that he won't get hit with the right uppercut. And, and the athlete, he's been a very active fighter, too. And that's why I always go by the activity level, you know. He moved right from his amateur career right into his professional career and has never had a lapse in between. You know, he's, the, you know, we don't recognize him as the world champion. 
although he's, he has a chance to win a title. There have been a couple of other uh, well-known uh, lightweight champions who came from Texas, John came oh. from here in Houston, and Lou Jenkins back in the 30s and 40s, a legendary character. Well, I remember Joe Brown, he was a very, very good title. Very good veteran. Old Bones is his nickname, I think they used to call him. Lou Jenkins was an astonishing puncher before he got himself into the bottle and squandered his talent. <laughs> Later became a decorated war hero in Korea. But the focus here is on young Juan Diaz. 45 seconds to go in the 11th round of what has been a brilliant performance. Stealing the show on a night when two of his main event stable mates Kermit Cintron and Rocky Juarez have already gotten the wins against good fighters that their promoters were hoping for. Oh. Low blow. That was a deliberate low blow because Sim thought that he had been hit low. And rather than to take the rest that might have been coming to him, Diaz just shook his head and said, I'll go right back in. Sim trying to pull Diaz toward the ropes, and Juan will have no part of it. Steps around, finds punching room again. Time! So that is now the... Now you have to finish it. Now, now, Elon. Whatever you have, whatever the strength, whatever the power, that's the last ring. So you have to fight. Uh -huh. And right hand. Well, look, I don't want no amateur punching. Okay? I want you to keep the hands high and keep punching from here. Okay? Unbelievable. I got you, baby. I got you. All right? Three, three minutes, baby. Three minutes. That's it. Don't get all. We got the mouthpiece. What a mouthpiece. I need the mouthpiece. Okay, okay. Here we go. Last round. I think that Diaz is less excited than Ronnie Shields. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, Diaz is just as cool. It's, it's just like he's uh, playing a game on the playground or something. He'll be 21 on September 17. Two months from now. Right now, he's on the verge of winning a world title belt. Young Juan Diaz. Yet another big rally. I'll tell you what, I still wouldn't want to have a fight a man's fight this lock for Sim. He's a tough, tough man. He's incredible. Tough man with short, dangerous punches, too. Crowd chanting for Juan Diaz, trying to bring him home in this extremely difficult 12-round fight. Well, we've seen some leather tonight on Boxing After Dark. Oh. One of the most action-filled three-fight guards we've ever programmed on the air. All three fights have seen tremendous competition. Well, we haven't even talked about Diaz's chin. He may have a hell of a chin. I believe he's got a great chin. I'm sure he can hit enough tonight to convince me anyway. But both guys have good chins. He's trying to close the show like a champ. What do I say? When you fight for the championship, you take the championship from the champ. You don't try to win it from him, and that's what he's did tonight. And let's see how he responds to the swelling chant of the crowd. And I tell you what, he's glad that it's a 12 round and not a 15 round. Down though. the stretch of his first championship fight. That's about, what, the second time all night the referee had to break him? Well, uh, there's Salem. Lasco never had to do too much tonight at all.
witnessing the arrival of a star at an exceptionally early age. 20-year-old Juan Diaz of Houston, fulfilling the prophecy of those in this community who've been saying ever since age 16, he'd win a world title. Well, Coming in with extreme resolution against a very difficult opponent, Black Pesadolia. It's been a physical war for 12 rounds. Atkinson didn't lose that fight. The other guy just took it. Ronnie Shields holding his fighter aloft in tremendous excitement for what Diaz accomplished, busting up the face of Lock the Sim over the course of 12 grueling and brutal rounds. Harold, how'd you score it? <laughs> okay, Jim, nine rounds to three, 117, 111, what the is, <laughs> Jim, I think we've said it all. Tremendous on, performance by a 20-year-old kid. The man in the tan cap hugging Juan Diaz is Willie Savannah. Hey, I need some water. The man under whom Diaz began his amateur career. Savannah, who years ago trained young Ronnie Shields as an amateur, now watches over Shields as he trains his new protege. Juan already has the judge's card, so let's go up for the decision in this title fight. Ladies and gentlemen, here in Houston, Texas, after 12 great championship rounds, a round of applause for these two lightweights in the ring here tonight. We go to the judges' scorecards. Ray Hawkins scores 118 to 110. Dwayne Ford, 116 to 112. Marcos Torres, 118 to 111. All to the winner by unanimous decision from Houston, Texas, the new WBA lightweight champion of the world, Juan, the baby boy.